Hi, today I have some benchmarks of the newest NVIDIA GPU. As you may know, earlier this year, NVIDIA launched the GTX 1660 Ti, which now sells for about $270 to $290, and the GTX 1660, which currently goes for about $230. And I know what you've probably been thinking, wouldn't it be great if NVIDIA wedged one more card in between those two? Maybe they could drop the price of the 1660 to 200 bucks, make another slightly better 1660 that was still $230? Wouldn't that be great? Now, that would be more than great. That would be super. Excellent! Deepcool knows that there's more than one way to cool a CPU, so for air cooling fans, they made the Assassin 3, a 280 watt TDP tower cooler that stays chilly and silent with seven heat pipes, dual 140 millimeter fans, and a polished nickel finish. Or if you prefer water cooling, the Castle 360EX is a 360 millimeter all-in-one with tasteful RGB lighting, exclusive anti-leak technology, and a copper base custom designed for maximum cooling performance. To find out more about Deepcool's Assassin 3 or the Castle 360EX, click the sponsor links in the description. So let's get right to it. This is the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super, not the TI, not the 1660, the Super. It's going to be right in between. They performed a tweak to the 1660 by upgrading the memory to GDDR6. That is pretty much the only difference between the 1660 and the 1660 Super. But even though this is still based on the 12 nanometer Turing TU116 GPU, they couldn't call it the 1660 Ti because that's already taken. So they're calling it the 1660 Super. To be clear, just like other GTX 1600 series cards, the 1660 Super does not include RTX capabilities. So still no RT cores, no hardware support for ray tracing or DLSS like you get with RTX cards, starting with the $350 RTX 2060 non-super. So with the 1660, you still get 22 streaming multiprocessor units and 1,408 CUDA cores, as well as six 32-bit memory controllers for a 192-bit bus. The memory on that bus now is GDDR6 though, and it's even 14 gigabits per second GDDR6, which is even faster than the 12 gigabits per second GDDR6 on the 1660 Ti. Two whole gibbs faster to be specific, although the 1660 Ti still has more CUDA cores and other stuff, so it should still be faster. But how much faster? Wait till we get to the benchmarks for that. The default base and boost clocks are also still the same for the 1660 Super, 1530 and 1785 megahertz respectively, and there is no reference design. We still have many variations of the 1660 Super from add -in board partners like MSI and Zotac, and oh hey, what a coincidence, I have add -in board partner cards from MSI and Zotac right here. From Zotac, I have the 1660 Super Twin Fan, a very appropriate name for a card with two fans, I suppose. It will sell for 240 US dollars, that's $10 over the MSRP, and the fans are actually two different sizes. Uh, there's a 75 millimeter larger one and a smaller 65 millimeter one that sits side by side, but overall this is a very tiny card. It measures in at just 173.4 millimeters, or 6.83 inches, and it is a dual slot cooler. There's no backplate or anything, Zotac will sell an amp version of this card as well for $250 that I'm very, fairly sure will have a backplate uh, in case it's not obvious, most of the designs that you're seeing here are pretty much the same as the existing designs that you'll see for 1660s and 1660 Ti's. Speaking of the same design as the existing 1660s and 1660 Ti's, MSI's Gaming X. Uh, it's a good design, I think. And while it's a larger card than the Zotac, measuring at about 9.75 inches long, it's still compact and does feature a nice brush metal backplate and some RGB lighting accents, which are nice and smooth with no hotspots. I didn't get the MSRP for this card, but uh, I'm gonna guess that it will also be 250 bucks. Supplemental power for both cards is provided by an eight pin PCI Express graphics power connector, and they both have the default display outs with three DisplayPort 1.4s and one HDMI 2.0B. Moving on to the benchmarks though, all tests here were run on this test system, which has an Intel Core i9-9900K running at 4.8 gigahertz across all cores, an ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard, a Noctua NHU12S tower air cooler, 16 gigs of G-Skill Royal RGB DDR4 memory at 3600 speed cast latency 16, a Samsung 970 EVO 500 gig NVMe SSD, an EVGA Supernova 750 watt 80 plus gold rated power supply, and Windows 10 64 bit. For comparison on the AMD side, I chose the cards that these cards fit between. On the low end, we have the AMD Radeon RX 590 8 gig, represented by XFX's Fatboy card, and the 590 does go for about 200 bucks these days, just FYI. Meanwhile, on the higher end, we have the RX 5700, which goes for about 330 to $350 right now. As you can see, there's a decent price gap in AMD's lineup here, which is, I think, 
why Nvidia is targeting so many cards in the $200 to $300 price range. For Nvidia GPUs, I included the GTX 1660 and 1660 Ti and the GeForce RTX 2060 to see how far behind the RTX cards these 1600 series GPUs sit. That said, let's get into the benchmarks. Actually, let's start out with a closer look at clock speeds. Here we can see the 1660 Super with pretty much the same exact clock speeds as the 1660, both base, boost, the max clock I hit, and the average clock were all pretty much exactly the same, which is what Nvidia said it would be. They didn't really change the GPU itself for the frequency. The upgrade here comes from the memory. We can see the 1660 Ti is uh, clocked a little bit slower out of the box, but actually runs a little bit faster. And then I've included clock speeds for the RTX 2060, as well as the AMD cards I'm comparing here as well. Please note that with the AMD cards here, we're looking at a different GPU architecture from a different company, so the clock speeds aren't necessarily directly comparable. And our first benchmark, 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra, starting out with some synthetics, and also these are the only tests that I'm running in their highest mode or ultra mode. This one runs at 4K and here we can see the 1660 Super with a graphics score of 3184 and an overall score of 3396. Bear in mind the RX 590 score here, which is significantly above the 1660 Super and the 1660 Ti. This is just sort of a standout for the 590 though. It performs a little bit better because it has an eight gig VRAM buffer rather than six gigs. If we're looking strictly at the GPU score though, the GTX 1660 is about 13 to 14% slower than the 1660 Super, while the 1660 Ti is only about 2% faster. And here is probably the reason why I'm being a little bit friendlier to the 1660 Super is it's acting a lot more like a slightly cut down 1660 Ti than a slightly boosted 1660. Next up is 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. This is still running in 4K, but we're looking at DirectX 12 performance now. Here the RX 590 has dropped down to the bottom, so a pretty stark difference from the Fire Strike Ultra tests. The 1660 Super, meanwhile, has an overall score of 2,991 and a graphic score of 2,784. Here again, the GTX 1660 is about 10 to 11% slower, whereas the 1660 Ti is only about three to three and a half percent faster. And if you're looking at the higher end cards, RTX 2060 and 5700, those are about 23 and 25% faster respectively. Next we have 3D Mark VR Mark Blue Room just to get some virtual reality testing up in here and the GTX 1660 Super has an overall score of 1,873 with an average frame rate of 40.8. This is a pretty punishing test when it comes to VR, but it is also a test that the RTX 2060 definitely excels at. And even the 1660 Ti beats the Radeon RX 5700 here. The RX 590 meanwhile performs the worst in this test. It's about 28% slower than the 1660 Super. The 1660 is about 8% slower than the 1660 Super. The RX 5700, meanwhile, is only about half a percent faster, and the 1660 Ti is about 5% faster. And now let's look at some actual game testing, starting with Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. Here, the GTX 1660 Super had an average frame rate of 39.2, with a 1% low of 25.5. This is at 2560 by 1440, by the way. The rest of the tests will be at 1440 and then at 1080. This is a DirectX 12 test, and at 1440, the 1660 was only about 4% slower than the 1660 Super, whereas the 1660 Ti is about 6, 6.1% faster. Meanwhile, the RTX 2060 is about 16% faster, and the RX 5700 has a big lead, almost 40% faster than the 1660 Super here. Switching over to 1920 by 1080, the 1660 Super has an average frame rate of 46.8 FPS. I had a strange anomaly here where the 1660 Ti actually outperformed the RTX 2060, at least in average frame rate. You can see there when you're looking at the 1% low though, that it was a little bit more normal at 31.6 compared to 33.5 for the RTX 2060. In this test, the GTX 1660 was again about 9% slower than the 1660 Super, whereas the 1660 Ti was about 7.5% faster. Next up is Grand Theft Auto V at 2560 by 1440, and the 1660 Super manages 90 frames per second on average, so that's pretty playable even at the relatively high settings that I run the benchmarks at. 1660 Ti was only able to get a couple more FPS, 92 on average, and the 1% lows were actually a bit lower here. So here the 1660 Super I think is really showing the performance of that faster memory and the increased memory bandwidth. Here the normal GTX 1660 was about 17% slower with an average frame rate of 70 and the RX 5700 and RTX 2060 were neck and neck with 105 FPS, uh, both about 16% faster than the 1660 Super. 
1920 by 1080, the 1660 Super had 132 average frames per second. The 1660 Ti was actually neck and neck with it. They were pretty much equivalent in performance aside from a very slight difference in the 1% lows here. Meanwhile, the GTX 1660 has an average frame rate of 113, making it about 15% slower, whereas the RX 5700 is about 10% faster. RTX 2060 is about 9% faster. Our next title is Battlefield 5, running at 2560 by 1440. This is in DirectX 11 mode. The GTX 1660 Super had an average frame rate of 63 frames per second, just beating out the RX 590, which had 62, which just beat out the GTX 1660 with 61. They're all very close right there. Meanwhile, the 1660 Ti is about 8% faster with an average FPS of 68. 20% faster for the RTX 2060 and 55% faster for the RX 5700, which really just loves Battlefield 5 with its average frame rate of 98 FPS. Let's see if this continues at 1920 by 1080. Here, the 1660 Super had an average frame rate of 84, just beating the 6060 with 83, just neck and neck with the RX 590, also with 83, but with a slightly lower 1% low. And yes, once again, the RX 5700 just blowing all the other cards out of the water here when you're given the relative price points of each one with 131 FPS. That is again, 55% faster than the 1660 Super, while the RTX 2060 once again is about 20% faster with its 100 FPS score. Next, we have Overwatch at 2560 by 1440. We're on epic settings here, and remember to set that render scale to 100%. GTX 1660 Super has 103 average frames per second, which is a decent little jump over the the GTX 1660, which has 95 FPS. This is actually probably where it's sitting the closest to right in between the 1660 and the 1660 Ti. The Ti had 113 average frames per second, which is about 24% faster. And the RX 5700, once again, 50% more frames, 153 average frames per second. Switching it to the lower resolution of 1920 by 1080, the 1660 Super gets more frames, up to 157. Again, a little bit closer to the 1660 Ti this time, which had 171. That makes it only about 9% faster in this instance. But again, the 1660 Super is right in between because the 1660 had 143 average frames per second, which is about 9% slower. As you can see, you can get a lot more frames if you're willing to spend an extra 100 bucks or so on an RTX 2060 or RX 5700 in this game. Those are 26% and 42% faster. And our last game here is Metro Exodus. The GTX 1660 Super didn't perform quite as well in this one, or you could look at it like the RX 590 performed quite well relatively in this one. It managed to beat the 1660 Super here with 34.5 average FPS compared to the 1660 Super's 34.1. Both of these are beating the 1660 though, which is down at 31.9. And here yet again, the RX 5700 is showing why Nvidia had to launch the 2060 Super because the 5700 gives you a lot of performance for that price uh, for around $350 and even $330 if you're willing to get the reference design. That is 53% faster at this resolution, just in case you're wondering. And then at 1920 by 1080, the RX 5700 got 66 frames per second, once again taking the top spot and that is 48% faster than the GTX 1660 Super's frame rate of 44.5. Again, we have a pretty tight grouping down here for the 1660s and the RX 590s, just a slight percentage difference in between those. But you can really see where once you jump from this tier of cards in the $200-ish range up to the $300-ish range, you do get a pretty significant bump up in frame rate, whether you're talking about the RTX 2060 with 57 FPS or the RX 5700 with 66. Now I have this slide for some analysis and comparison. I basically accumulated all of the tests at 2560 by 1440 and 1920 by 1080, and I've shown their overall performance here relative to the 1660 Super. You can immediately see that the GTX 1660 is gonna be about seven to 8% slower compared to the 1660 Super, so that is about the performance gain that you're getting for the same price. So I guess you can't really complain there because you're talking about the same price. 1660 Ti, meanwhile, I think becomes a bit harder sell because we're looking at only about a five to five and a half percent performance boost. And you're looking at a price increase of about 50 bucks, which is significant in this price range. Meanwhile, the RTX 2060 is about 20% faster, give or take. The RX 5700 is 36 to 42% faster. So again there, I think you're gonna see a pretty nice bump up in improvement if you're willing to spend the money on something like an RX 
RX 5700. That said, not everyone has that much money. So let's look at these charts with the prices of the GPUs also laid out on the chart. And once again, given the GTX 1660 Super 100% weight here at the top, and then you can see all the other cards listed and their relative performance. 1660, for example, being about 8% slower. So it's at 92 and 92.4. Uh, although it is less expensive. So 240 bucks for the 1660 Super. And yes, I put 240 there because that's the price of the 1660 Super that I was testing. There are apparently 1660 Supers available for $230, but I don't wanna do that because that's not the card that they gave me. Even with that slightly higher price though, I think this just goes to show that the GTX 1660 Super is probably doing a better job of competing with the GTX 1660 Ti than the Radeon RX 590. The RX 590 is still down there at 200 bucks. The performance drop off is a few percentage points compared to the GTX 1660 but I think it is still a reasonably good bargain. But please bear in mind that there are a bunch of other games that could also be tested here. So uh, you should be comparing the RX 590 and the standard 1660 in the games that you're most likely to play if you're trying to get an idea of which one to choose between the two of them. So if I was being cynical, I think I'd accuse Nvidia of doing a minor GPU launch at the start of the holiday season without too much that's new, but just to see a bump in exposure with reviews like this one that puts the product back into the minds of consumers. Isn't being cynical fun? Uh, to counter the cynics though, Nvidia is launching the 1660 Super at the same price that the 1660 used to be and dropping the price of the 1660 to align it a little bit more with the RX 590. I think the RX 590 is still a great value at 200 bucks, but if you wanna spend just a little bit more than that, you can definitely get more frames at 1080 or 1440 resolution with a 1660 Super. And the fact that it's not 250 or 260 bucks base price means that you can get more for your money now than you could last week before this launched. And I think that makes it a good thing overall. And if I have a complaint, it's just that the 1600 series is so dang confusing now. There's three different 1660 cards alone. So I hope anyone who's looking at a graphics card in this price range might be assisted a little bit by this video when it helps explain which card is which and which card performs better than the other one. I will post links to these cards down in the video's description. Let me know in the comments section if you're gonna pick up a 1660 Super yourself. And of course, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.